Today, Mr. Mr. Onokare is going to be talking about your mind and your money. Right now, I'd like to have Mr. Omokare on stage. Oh, Mr. Omokare, I can't, I can't, can't hear you. Sorry. Oh, okay. Good evening to you. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing this evening? I'm good. Thank you for the opportunity to share my thoughts. Yeah, I, I feel we feel we feel great. We feel blessed. <laughs> we feel okay by this. Um, so, um, Mr. Mucker, can we know a little bit about you? Can you introduce yourself? Okay, I actually did a brief introduction on my slides. Do you mind if we all go straight to my slides? So I just talk straight from my slide, or you want me to do that so we just skip through it when we start? Oh, okay, no, yeah. you tell you also a little bit, then go in, okay. in afterwards. Yeah, my name is Osai Tres Omokaro. I'm the founder okay. of Tres Caro Systems and Solution. I actually major in working with startups and helping people with innovative ideas to shorten the distance between the ideas and the market. You know, my major focus is actually in helping people to assess funding for their business. Oh. And in doing this, I've authored about four books. One is in the offing that will be released on my birthday, like uh, 12 days from now. Wow. You know, but the other three books are focused on helping people act, uh, really go through their thought pattern and come up with the most profitable idea from the tutorial of ideas that floods their mind. The second talks about how you can take the idea from the idea stage to the market, where the third one talks about how to assess funding for your business idea so yeah. in the course of my work i've really seen that a lot of mindset comes to play as it relates to people having to assess funding for their business so when i had the opportunity to talk to you know, today and i was asked what would you like to talk about i would like to talk about your mind and your money oh. so that's what brought us here. thank you okay that's lovely thank you for the brief um introduction of yourself we really do appreciate and we hope for the best from today's teaching have a stage mr mccurry okay thank you so much uh you may want to help me make my slide available or can i do that from my end okay Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's always a privilege to share my thoughts. Every opportunity I have to share my thoughts with people with innovative ideas or people who are willing to learn, I always feel like an opportunity. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna to be looking at your mind and your money. You know, somebody's gonna ask, what does this do have to do with my money? You know, we are all from what they have called a third world nation even though i don't subscribe to that and whether you like it or not our environment plays a lot in determining what's happening in our heads and what happens in our heads find a way to play itself into our lives so today i want to be looking at some ways our mind and our thinking pattern affect how we relate with money and ultimately determine how much money flows in our life so who am i I'm a certified business coaching expert, a certified business consulting expert, business development expert, a business management expert, and a public speaker. I'm an ISO 9001 2015 quality management. I'm the founder of three companies. I founded Trescaro Systems and Solution. The website is there, you can check us out. I also run Trescaro Properties. And I run Echo Connect Portal, which is a, waste digital, a digital waste management platform. You know, I'm not going to be spending so much time on this slide because I have a lot to talk about today. So I've authored four books. This particular one on the screen is currently on pre-order. You can pre-order it right away, link right away. You know, this is the only one among my book that is trying to deal with the issue of unemployment. I actually decided to do this because as a startup and I work a lot with people with innovative ideas building their businesses trying to start out from the scratch one of the major challenges we are facing is that we have to deal with employees employ employees yeah and when you get people on board 
then you come to relate with the major notion that goes around there that Nigerian graduates are, un are unemployable. You know, so because we don't want to keep complaining, we decided let's do something about it. So we all thought this group is going to, it is, it's a two sided sort. It's going to help employers of labor to be able to get the best. And it's going to help those that are seeking for jobs to be able to prepare themselves and come into the job place with a mindset to contribute value, not just coming into the workplace with a mindset to help themselves. You know, so then the other one, four indisputable steps to choosing a profitable business idea, you can assess it on the link there. Then from idea to the market, these are the few books I talked about just now I introduced myself. And the final one, which is the big one, funding your business idea. But a lot of people complain so much as to how to raise funding for their business. This is something, this is a code I have broken. I have assessed the Tony Lumelu Foundation in 2017. And beyond that, my series of businesses have been able to attract different funding. And I have assisted over 10, between 30 to 50 people to do the same. So I decided to put all of those experience in a book for people to be able to access so the impact can spread wider. So feel free to assess them there. Yes, now we go straight to our agenda for today. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, so I read the Bible a lot. So your mind, the Bible says in Proverbs 23, verse 7, it said, as he thinks within himself, so is he. You know, when you read this scripture, sometimes you want to tell yourself, as a man thinketh is in, heart, in his heart, so he will be. No, the Bible said, so is he. So the reality, the experiences we are all having today is a product of our thinking. He didn't say the way you think, that's how you will be. He said, that's who you are. So I used to tell people, if you want to know how wise you are, in fact, I, I, I made a post yesterday on my Facebook and I said, your wisdom, the quality of your wisdom is reflecting all around you. It reflects in two major ways, the depth of the peace you enjoy and the balance of your accounts. If you are wise, your wisdom should be able to procure you peace and your wisdom should be able to translate the money. If it has not done that, you are not yet really manifesting your wisdom, you know, so that's that. Then your mind houses your memory and your imagination. Those are the two functions of your mind. The memory helps you to replay, to, to replay your past while your imagination help you to play your future. Imagination is one thing that nobody limits. You can't be sitting right here in your room if you're watching us from Nigeria, and in your imagination, you choose to be in the White House as the President of the United States of America. Nobody stops you. So our imagination is that gift that God has given us to be able to play into the future. So you can begin to reprogram yourself from the past memories that have plagued us till now. So your mind is actually could be of advantage if you know how to make the best use of it, but if you don't, it could become of a disadvantage to you where you are, when all you do is just trying to play your past running. And nobody runs fast. Nobody drives fast staring at the rear view mirror. Your memory always keeps emphasizing your past and your imagination plays a lot of role in helping you see a bright future. You know, then within your memory, that's where you have your belief system, you know, and the truth is your belief system practically runs your life. There's another part of the scripture, I think it's in Proverbs 4 from verse 20, 23, there about, it said, guard your heart, for out of it flows the issues of life. So your entire life actually runs from your belief system. Your entire life runs from your belief system. And we have two major belief systems. I'm sure this is not new to any of us, but we're just gonna take a very quick look at it. We have your limit, we have limiting beliefs and we have empowering beliefs. Because our conversation tonight is all about money, I'm gonna be talking about how these limiting beliefs and empowering beliefs play themselves out 
in as long as it relates to money. So let's look at some limiting beliefs that have become so accustomed to us because of our environment. The first one is going to shock you. You know, when you hear the word work hard to earn money, we've heard that word so much to the extent that when you hear the word money, you think about something difficult. That in itself is a limitation. That in itself is a limitation. You know, when you tell yourself you need to work hard for money, it's a limitation in itself. Hard work is good, but you really don't need to work hard. You don't need to connect anything difficult to money. You don't need to connect anything difficult to money. And the second one is what I love to do can supply me the amount of money I need. I'm sure a lot of us have heard it several times. When people think, when we tell people, you just need to find your passion and try to monetize your passion. People will tell you, this is exactly what I like to do, that I really can't find out this can generate me money. You know, I'm just trying to do this to get hands to meet. I'm just trying to do this to be able to access the money I need so I will eventually come back to what I love to do. Truth of matter is, everyone you find doing that, trying to do whatever they can do, to come back to their passion later ends up never coming back. Because the truth is, when you are out of your place of passion, hands hardly ever meet. The hands hardly ever meet. So this is another limiting belief. When you think that what you love to do cannot supply the amount of money you do. My mindset about this is that everything you enjoy doing, if you can invest the time, the energy to to, to, to build it beyond just being a gift and a talent, and you're able to build expertise and you become an authority in it to eventually pay off. Then the third one is money is the root of all evil. We hear this a lot, especially those of us that have our background in, in Christianity, you know, to tell you the love of money is the root of all evil. But I want to tell you the lack of money will cause more evil than the love of money. Of course, you, the idea is not for you to love money. In fact, as we go ahead and we begin to talk about other perspective of money, you're going to understand where you really ought to be. The goal is not for you to love money or worship money, but there is a disposition you need to have about money. We're going to be dealing with all of that as we proceed. You know, there's also this mindset that wealthy people are criminals. You know, I actually had my first encounter with this as I began to self-develop, as I began to self-educate myself, you know, and the first set of books I began to read were telling me about the need for me to model rich people around me, the need for me to understand wealthy people around me and try to emulate them. And because I have this same mindset that most wealthy people around us in Nigeria are criminals, so I had a struggle. Where do I start from? If every wealthy man is a criminal, and I don't want to be a criminal, so how do I cope? You know, this is where a lot of us are today, where you connect wealth with crime. Once you connect wealth with crime, and every human being have a sense of morality within us, you are going to begin to repair wealth because your mind is going to say money equal to crime. So because I don't need crime, you will repel money. So deal with that. Wealthy people are not criminal. Wealth has a process. Even criminals cannot sustain wealth. I have not, nobody is ranking among the richest people on earth who have stole their way into wealth. It takes some level of smartness. It takes some level of wisdom and creativity to sustain wealth. So disconnect wealth from crime and criminality. It is possible to be wealthy, wise, and righteous. You know, this is another thing. It's not possible to be wealthy legally. You know, a lot of us believe. That's why when you see people who drive good cars, when you see people who live in mansions, the first thing that comes up in your mind is that these people are criminal. They are criminals. If you are like that, please begin to rewire your mind begin to rewire your mind, just like I said before. If your mind connects wealth to crime, 
if your mind will connect wealth to suffering, if your mind will connect making money to hard work, anything negative connected to money makes you repel money. It makes you to repel money. So it is very possible, especially today where the world is now flat, where technology has reached the gap. You don't need, somebody say, you don't need to live in dollars to earn in dollars. So today you can choose to say, I don't want to earn in Naira anymore. And legitimately you begin to earn in whatever currency of the church. These are possibilities today. So don't allow this mindset that I can't be wealthy legally. You can't. You can't. Then another limit, limited, limiting belief is that I can't be rich and righteous. It is possible to be rich and righteous. Very possible to be rich and righteous. So let's look at some empowering beliefs that we need to have, especially as it relates to money. I am royalty. And the, 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 the fortunate thing is that most of the empowering beliefs that you will ever have to get, you may just have to get them from the Bible. I am royalty. When well, you understand that you are the son of a king, the Bible said the cattle upon the thousand hills belongs to your father. The Bible said the earth is your father's and the fullness thereof. Just understand that I am royalty. I deserve everything good. I deserve the best of the earth. The Bible said the profit of the earth belongs to all of us. He said even the kings are fed from it. Royalty makes you think that the earth is out there to save you. The earth is out there. The Bible calls us ambassadors. An ambassador doesn't bother about the economy of the country he's living in. An ambassador's life is powered by the economy of his country. That's why you can't see an American ambassador thinking about what is happening in Nigeria because the economy of our country doesn't affect him. So when you know that you are royalty, it cultures your mind and help a lot as it relates to your disposition and your handling of money. Also understand is that wealth is limitless. Wealth is limitless. For me to be wealthy, I don't need to plunder you. I can be wealthy, you can be wealthy, and both of us can be wealthy all at the same time. Wealth is limitless. Wealth is limitless. Money helps me spread good. You know, begin in your head, begin to connect money to the good things that it can do. Begin to connect money because once you think about money and your mind can, can think about the good things, then you begin to attract. Because a life, the truth is, what you strongly believe, what you strongly hold strong to emotionally will find itself in your life. But imagine when you connected money to hard work. And no human being, to be frank, even those of us that say we work hard. I just drove in all up to 10 minutes before this class started. Just came back from work and I'm here and I'm sure I'm going to be here for another 45, 45 minutes. You know, we work hard because we are enjoying what we're doing that's why we talk about working in the line of your passion working along the path of your passion so even hard work is not done because you need money you work hard because you just enjoy what you're doing so money helps me spread good money answers to my thinking so when you don't have money when money is lacking the first thing you want to do is, what is happening to my mind? What am I thinking about? Am I allowed the environment to come into me? Am I, you know, the ship will never sink on water until the ship begins to allow the water to come into it. The environment is not the reason why you're broken. The environment is not the reason why you're broken. I shared something this morning. I said, our wants find itself in our conversations that our real expectations find itself in our behavior you know the environment is not the reason that you want money is not enough you know 
If you expect to be wealthy, it will be seen in your behavior, it will be seen in your disposition, it will be seen in the way you carry yourself. You will carry yourself as royalty. You know, and this is it. I got this from Tehab Eka, the secret of the millionaire mind. He said, thoughts equal to feelings, and feelings equal to action, actions equal to results. But what we're going to do from here now is to start to reprogram your thoughts so that the reprogrammed thoughts can affect your feelings, then it will ultimately affect your action and your results, your financial result will be totally different. I'm sure I have your mind to go ahead with that. So let's see what we need to do to begin to reprogram our mind so that we can begin to attract the money and the wealth that we really deserve or desire. The journey of reprogramming you for wealth start and end in your imagination. If you look at a lot of the things we've been talking about is there are things that flows from your memory. So you want to deliberately begin to look at how you use your imagination to culture your life, how you use your imagination to culture your world. So now let's start. I'm going to help you to identify what I call your money scripts. Your money scripts. What are money scripts? They are the unwritten codes dictating your financial life. Those unwritten rules, they are dictating your financial life. They are unwritten. They've been sold into you from your environment, but they are actually determining what is happening to you. As we go ahead in a short while, you're going to see how this works. You know, what are the sources of your money scripts? Why do you expose your, some of the things you heard from your parents? Some of us, you tell your parents, I need to buy this, and your parents scream out, money doesn't grow on trees. You think I'm plucking money? Don't you know you need to work hard to have money? Don't you know we need to manage? You've heard these things over and over. You may not know they are sown inside your subconscious mind. You may not even be consciously working with them, but they are determining your decisions as it relates to money. They are determining your disposition as it relates to money. You know, your environment creates that attitude. You know, and another thing you must understand, our, our personal disposition to money has a lot to do with the culture. You know, they will tell you culture is a way of life of our people. The way the dominant disposition to money around your environment influences how you deal with money. You know, there are places where it, it, it's not really a big deal. You don't really need to have all the money. But if you, if you look at capitalist environment like the United States, where money determines a lot of things, where, where how much you make gives you some level of influence and status, you know, Everybody is striving. You know, when people are making it big, they say they are achieving the American dream, which is the capacity for humans to develop to their top level and begin to end at big level. They say they are achieving an American dream, you know. So the environment with which we grow matters. I was listening to a particular lady, and she was sharing. She said, while we were growing up, during dinner, our mom would ask us questions like, you. Tell me, if you ever happen to become the World Bank leader, or you ever happen to become one of the world leaders, what would be your manifesto? Would you read it for me? That this one we have to read our own, the other one we have to read a mother that was raising two female children. They will read because the mother, at the end of those scripts, it's like they are reading their manifesto to her. At the end of that, she will then decide who to vote for. She said the mother kept doing this to them over and over. The lady in question, I can't remember her name in particular, as at the time she was sharing, she was the chief executive officer of MC Cola globally. You know, I connected that to a mindset that the mom drove into them from childhood. How dare you have children sitting down to eat? You're asking them to read their manifesto like they are world presidents, like they are global leaders. You're sending something into their consciousness. 
you know, that's one of the things that the book which that Paul that was trying to address when he said the issue of money is never taught in school, it's learned at home. So the idea is what can a poor man teach the children at home? In fact, somebody said the easiest way to be poor in Africa is to simply follow your father's footsteps. That's where you see a father, a mother, who were civil servants. They rose up to the height of civil service. They are struggling, they are queuing up today, they can't even get their pension. But the best advice they can give their children is face your education, come up to the good grade, and get civil servants job, civil service job. You know why? Your pension is guaranteed. That is the best they know. So our manuscripts have been developed by our exact environment. And the amazing thing is that your life is being powered by these manuscripts. Because there are not rules that you can see and begins to change, you are not really conscious of it. But it's determining what you are earning, it's determining how you're relating with money, it's determining a lot about your money. So let's look at these four basic money scripts that is available. And as you listen to these four basic money scripts, you're going to find yourself inside one of them. You're going to find yourself inside one of them. The first, okay, this basic uh, money scripts was developed by Brad, Brad Klotz. There are four basic attitudes to money according to Brad Klotz, a research associate professor at Kansas State University. The first one is money avoidance. How does money avoidance work? You know, there are people that just feel that I don't deserve it. They just feel like there's no need for it. If I can take care of myself, then at least I have one car, I can live in a house of my own. I think that's okay. What do I need all of this money for? They try to avoid money because they so much internalize that same limiting belief, that same money. Is the root of all evil. You know, these people inadvertently never have more than enough. They always have to manage because that is all their mind can accept. The next is money washing. This is another extreme. This is another extreme where people think that if I can have a big break, all my problems are solved. That's why you see people who think that with money, they don't need anybody. You know, these are people that place money where money doesn't belong. As good as money is, there are things you still cannot buy. You know, so money is not to be worshipped. But the issue with those of us in the religious background, if we don't balance it, is that when we are trying to avoid money worship, we speed straight to money avoidance. And none is good. You either avoiding money or you worshiping money. <laughs> Both of them are wrong. Then the third one is money state of status. People that believe that their status in life is determined by how much they have. These are people that will go all out there to borrow money to live a lifestyle they really cannot afford. These are ladies that would rather borrow money to buy the hair to prove that they are in the status. These are the guys that we pay 2 million naira and use 1.9 million naira to buy a car and begin to ask you for money for here two weeks after. These are the people that school salary is a million naira in a year, but they would rather go buy a car with a million naira because they believe that the money I have determines my status. But this is where we all must Oh, I think I missed it. Okay. Oh, I think I missed something. Okay, money worship, money state. The final one is money vigilance. Money vigilance. I think it skips me. I didn't put it in my slide. What is money vigilance? Money people that are vigilant as it relates to money are people whose eyes follows their money. They know where the money is. They, they, they monitor their expense. They monitor their revenue. They know how to manage it. In fact, I wrote something on my status or on my, I, I posted something like two, three days back on my Facebook. I said, don't get distracted. 
by the much revenue you are earning. The only thing that keeps you in business is profit. You know, a lot of revenue could flow through your accounts and you get deceived that I'm earning big. A $3 million flows through your account in a year and your expense for that year was $3.1 million, you are still broke. You know, people that are money vigilant, they know how to invest, they understand the books, they understand the movement of money. This is where a lot of the wealthy people are. This is where I need you to be. Money vigilance, money vigilance. You know, money is always an inner game. This is Warren Buffett talking. He said, I always knew I was going to be rich. I don't think I ever doubted it for a minute. This is where I want you to be. When we talk royalty, when we're talking about a mindset that attracts money, we're talking about a mindset that knows that I am wealthy. Whether I can see the money now or not, I am wealthy. So, um, 2004-2005, I was attending an interview to become a bank, and in the process, one of the persons who interviewed me said something. As we were beginning to talk about our life dreams and passion, and where we see ourselves in the future, I told him I'm coming into the bank to study the corporate world for five years. After five years, I'm out of this. I want to teach people about how to make money. So today, one of my greatest strategies helping people earn seven figure guaranteed without so much stress even in an economy that seems to be broken why because you're not limited to this economy you know as i shared my thought the man said something he said you're too ambitious you're going to steal our money i started laughing he was watching he said why are you laughing he said i have predicted two people like this and they ended up stealing our money and they've been sad as they said i'll be the first to disappoint you he said, why? I said, because the bank doesn't even have the kind of money that I can steal. I said, just imagine if Dan Guti had stolen 20 million as a young child. You know, because this is this was my thinking. Why will I go and jeopardize a future that is blissful by just stealing a million hair or having to end illegally? And just so the future that is blissful. So this is what Warren Buffett is talking. He said, I always knew I was going to be rich. I don't think I ever doubted it for a minute. Till date, for over 50 something years, Warren Buffett have been hovering around the most the richest person, the third, the fourth, the fifth, all through almost all of his life. Started from his mind. You know, money is always an inner game. Play it to win, not trying to avoid losing. You know, this is a word play. Sometimes you're playing a game, trying to avoid losing. Or you're playing a game, trying to win. When you're trying to avoid losing, obviously it means you're going to win. But in your mind, your mind is recording two different things. That's why even in church, when we declare, say, I cannot be poor, I don't declare it. I said, I always declare I am rich because I'm conscious of what I want my mind to be record. The dominant thought in your head will be attracted to your life. So when you are declaring, I cannot be poor, I cannot be poor, your mind is recording poor, poor. But I'm declaring I am rich, I am wealthy. I'm traveling around the world. I'm impacting life. I'm impacting governors and presidents of nations. My business is thriving all around. My mind is hearing something totally different. So money is always a game of the mind. Play is to win. When you are playing to win, 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 win is recorded in your subconscious. Let me tell you something about the way the mind works. Your mind takes instruction from your mind takes instruction from you. When they talk about a certain amount of money and your first response, ah, that's too big. Your mind records it. One million naira is too big for him. One million naira is danger, danger, danger. Please protect him from anything that has to do with one million naira. 
your mind records it. Your mind is a very loyal servant. You know, so even when you begin to attract money, when there is an opportunity that will give you a millionaire, your mind will raise up a standard against it. You know, the Bible said, <laughs> when the enemy comes like a flood, it said, the Lord will raise a standard. Your mind raises up a standard against what you have told it that is an enemy. And in this case, you just told your mind that this amount is an enemy. So your mind is working day and night to ensure that it deprives you of any that kind of amount. You see it? So when you hear money, never let your heart beat. Understand that money is just nominal. It's nominal. My pastor would call it paper, colored paper. Don't allow it to go. If you talk to me now and say we need to raise 10 million naira, we have a project to do the way I just said it, this number. That is it. I may not even have it, but you don't need to see it on my face. Then we begin to look for ways to attract it. We begin to look for ways to raise it. I'm not going to begin to threaten myself because you just mentioned 10 million and what? You know, this is the mindset. This is the way we must work mindset you must maintain about money i'm going to just run through this mindset you must maintain about money oh my god i think i made a mistake here okay we're going to get back to that i think it's on my slide down what i think some part of the slide did not i didn't did not see okay i'm going to talk about something i call your money ceiling your money ceiling your money ceiling is that subconscious is your money ceiling subconsciously limits your capability to handle or generate money past a certain amount once you have hit that ceiling you will not progress any further let me tell you how this works i'm sure a lot of you are going to be able to relate to this when you watch this see the way it works if you have if within your mind you have limited yourself to a million dollars, to five hundred thousand dollars, to ten million naira, that becomes your money ceiling. How does it work? Even when you earn two million dollars, two hundred million naira, thirty million naira, you come to a place of relaxation. You tell yourself, "Wow, ah, I was actually spending ten million. Now I have thirty million. It's time for me to rest." everything begins to work you will squander that money squander that money until you fall back to that threshold of your money ceiling once you fall back there in fact you won't fall back to your money ceiling you fall back to what i call your money flaws there is money ceiling there is money flow majority of time we all live in between these two spaces you are either hitting your money ceiling or you are below within your money flows. When you hit your money ceiling, you relax. Once you relax, you start to squander. You start to waste unconsciously because your mind already knows that 10 million is his budget. 10 million is his height. Don't let him go beyond there so that he doesn't go kill himself. Protect him, protect him. So situations and circumstances are happening. To make sure you squander the money. If your money flow is one million until you get down to one million, all of your subconsciousness rises up again and you begin to tell yourself, What am I doing? I need to be hard working. Then you start to work hard again because you have found yourself within your money flows. That is how it works. Your sin. Let's check out your money ceiling. Let's check out your money ceiling. Do this for me. What do you you currently earn write it on a piece of paper or what exactly will you like to end just write it on a piece of paper we're going to play a game right now have you written it if you are written one million a month 10 million a year 200 million a month write it down that is what you want to earn or what you are currently earning then do this for me double it when you double it how did you feel? How do you feel? If you've told yourself you want to earn one million naira, 
It means within your space, within all of the things you do, your capacity to earn, your capacity to generate, you decided that, oh, one million naira is fair enough for me to earn. And I say double it, something will shift on the inside of you. Your mind begins to think, how am I going to be able to do this? This is what coaching, this was business coaching does for you. It stretches you beyond your limits. You're limiting yourself if all the results you're getting are the results that you have decided to get. You need a coach in your life who can stretch you. It's part of what we do for the people that work with us. You know, we stretch them. I have a team of young people I work with. I call them the Trescaro tribe. What do we do then? We work to ensure that every member of that tribe earns seven figure monthly. Monthly. And it is too. You know, you know, it takes a lot for you to begin to ask what is it? One million? Is it talking one million, two million, three million, nine million? Every month, how possible is that? Let me tell you, when you hear the word six figure, if your mind reads, wow, what is six figure? 100,000 is already six figure. 900 is six figure. What do you do? How many of the product or service do you need to put out? How many people need to patronize your product for you to hit a million naira? If you do the math, then how do I reach these people? Who are they? Where are they? What are the marketing strategies and structures I need to put in place to reach these people? You're going to find out how easy it is to click seven people. Do you have a product that's selling for 50,000 naira? You just need 20 people to patronize you and you earn a million. What are the ads? What are the strategies I can put in place to get 20 people within 30 days to patronize my products? I'm sure with just this conversation, you can see how easy it is to hit a million naira. Or do you have a product that sells for 10,000 naira? Just calculate the number of people that need to patronize you to earn a million naira. Just 100 people. How can I reach them? As simple as that, seven figure is possible. It starts from here. If your mind cannot grasp it, forget it and have it. It's not just it even goes about, it goes farther than just believing it. About every month, the first day of every month, I do a live broadcast. Or I see myself as royalty. I just believe I have a stake in the agenda of humanity. So I broadcast on a monthly basis where I try to just guide people's thinking along the certain paths. What I broadcasted this morning was talking about the journey between wants and expectation. That's what I talked about earlier, where I said our wants expresses itself in our conversation, that our real expectations express itself in our behavior. You know, if I ask how many people want to be successful, everybody will raise up their hands. That if I ask, looking at the parameters of your life, looking at your gifts and your talent, your economic opportunities around you and the challenges, do you expect to be successful? Many will go quiet. Because if you expect to be successful, you begin to behave it. Sorry, let me come back and see how we can wrap this up in another five minutes. Your money flaws. Your money flaws is where you are currently content with the amount of money we have. Determined ever, either by our ability to generate sales in our business or our capability to earn it. That is the least, just as you have a ceiling, you have a flaw. You know, when we hit this money flaw, this is when all of the adrenaline in our body and mind begins to work. Because at this place, we are feeling like, oh, we're dying, we're dying, where is the money? You know, immediately you hit your ceiling, there is this rest and relaxation that comes. So how do you deal with this? Because in life, we are always in between our flaws and our ceiling. If you don't deliberately work to increase both, you will self-sabotage, 
to event if you eventually attract more than your ceiling you subconsciously squander them till it comes back to your ceiling or your floor because your mind has been trained to keep you within your ceiling and your floor so you must constantly work to increase your ceiling and increase your floor as you keep increasing it all starting from within your mind as you keep increasing this your capacity to end keeps increasing and this wealth keeps flowing because money takes instruction from us so until you make any more a conscious choice understand how your thoughts interact with your declaration of worth you are going to feel stuck and not understand why you can't make progress so you must make any more a conscious choice a conscious choice your competition is not with anybody your competition is with your bank inflow of last months i had i had a session with my team and we we're asking ourselves how can we make this this amount this month and we we're putting strategies together on how this can happen is a conscious and a deliberate effort. You know, people don't do what you expect, they do what you expect. So you must deliberately and consciously sculpture it and inspect the execution of it. You know, so there is this one sure way out of being broken. Always put yourself in trouble. Let's open King as I said that the best way to come out of trouble is to get into trouble. What do I mean by saying always put yourself in trouble? The wealthiest guys on earth are always in trouble, they create their troubles because I have also found that by research and experience that life presents you trouble when you are not in one. This Les Brown that said, in life, we are either in trouble, going towards trouble, or just coming out of trouble. So imagine what you have, you create your trouble. You just tell yourself, for instance, I want to build two houses this year. That becomes your trouble. As you are earning money, 10 million hits your account. The next week, you're broke. Why? You are channeling it into solving your troubles solving your problem so how do i mean when i say put yourself in trouble what i'm actually telling you is always create a demand for your money before it comes so you never have any reason to relax and think that i have arrived so i can go and rest let me tell you something if you sit down and budget and million right now and the next one week you have eight million you still will not feel rich you know why you already have a budget for 10 million and now you have 8 million you will still be looking for a way to get 2 million but imagine someone who has no budget as he gets 8 million he tells himself i have tried let me blow 1 million and go and rest that's why you see some of these young boys they lodge themselves into a hotel and pay for a number of days they come out in the evening they go clubbing because they have no budget for their money you know, so when you put yourself in positive trouble, let me tell you the trouble that Angle is currently in. If you want to know, he wants to build the largest refinery in the world. That is his trouble. He's looking for money from the bank. Imagine your uncle just earned a hundred million naira, but he has a trouble of 120 million. Then all you are asking for is just 200,000 to pay your schools. But your uncle just earned a hundred million. That is looking for 20 million, he cannot give you 200,000. You may not understand that is because he has created your trouble. So just create your trouble, and your money ceiling will consistently be high, and you'll be earning B and yet not relaxing. Just keep attracting. Why? Because the money are plugged into more investment that makes you limitlessly wealthy. And then you can begin to do good and make life meaningful for people to meet them. A broke man cannot help another broke man. The best he can do is to commiserate with him and 
just empathize, but you really can't help. A tree that is weak can never be climbed. A sick person cannot donate blood. So let's work hard. Let's end. Work hard on your mind and shift your mind from the mentality of poverty and let wealth reign in your head. When wealth reigns in your head, your head, you will feel it in your hands. Thank you very much for this great opportunity to be in your space. I'm sure I have done a lot to shift your thinking and your mindsets. So, so my name is Osai Tresomokaro. You can check me out. You can check me out on Tresomokaro.com. All of my social media handles are Tresomokaro. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, everything, Trescaro. And my business account at Trescaro Systems. So check me out there. I do a lot working with business owners and people with innovative ideas. My website is trescaro.com. I have a lot of videos on YouTube that can help shift your thought pattern. You know, so, I'll be willing to work with you if you are willing to work with me. I enjoy helping people in seven figures. Yeah, of course, I know it's easy. I know it's easy. Something just needs to shift from your mind. Something just needs to shift from your mind. When your mind shifts, your bank account shifts along with it. So I'm sure you've been having fun all the while for this program. I want to particularly appreciate all of the organizers and sponsors of this program. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, thank you, thank you for what you're doing. So if there are room for questions, please send in questions. Send in your questions. If there are room for questions, send in your questions. Thank you. Just send in your question. I'm available to answer your questions. Okay, how do I end? Okay, how do I know my passion? I like so many things. How do I select which one to go into? You know, truth is, Business. I work with a lot of tech savvy young men who, because they have acquired the capacity to build products and services, they just go ahead and build it. But that's a wrong thing to do. You have passion for a lot of things. Passion is not just enough. You must take your passion. You know, somebody said it's not enough for you to use your passion to fill a gap. You just want to be sure. It's not enough for you to use your passion to fill a gap in the market. You just want to be sure that there is market in the gap that you're filling. You know, if you say, I can do a lot of things, what you want to do is that you want to begin to pull out some of the things you can do and put them, put them out in the public place. Put them out in the public place so you can get feedbacks. You can get feedbacks. So you can get feedback. The feedbacks will tell you where to now major on. And whatever you have a passion for, you must be willing to first of all do for free. You must be willing to first of all do for free. You know, because as I as I grew up in life, I connected with Dr. Mike Woodock, a preacher in the United States. One of the first things he said as I read his book, the assignment, he said something. He said, What would you rather do if money? Was not the issue. He also coined it in another way. He said, if every job pays the same salary, what would you rather be doing? That was where I knew that I'd rather be teaching because I enjoy teaching. You know, but the truth is, I now came down to myself and asked myself, in teaching, who am I? 
who are the best set of people I can relate to. I realized that for me to teach children, I need to do a lot of work on my patients. You know, I need to do a lot of work on my patients to be able to work with children. You know, so I cut that off. Then I decided I was going to teach the young adults and adults. Then I asked myself again, what is it that I enjoy talking about? I enjoy talking politics, I enjoy talking relationship, I enjoy talking business. In fact, business comes very handy. And I asked myself, among these three people, who among them can pay me for what I want to teach them? I realized that if I can help business people with me, they'll be willing to pay me. You see the steps I took it through. But before I could begin to end from my passion, I gave out a lot for free. Till date, I still do a lot of stuff for free. You know, so you want to put yourself out there and begin to do what you think you are passion for. If you cannot do it for free, you really don't have a passion for it. You know, because what you really earn from doing what you love to do is that satisfaction that you enjoy. Money only become an additional benefit. Somebody said, if you do what you love, you never work any day of your life. Because I shared something with one of my mentees yesterday in a one-on-one -on -one session, and I, I said, when you see JJ Okocha playing football, can you see the joy in him? That young man is just playing football for the fun of it. In fact, I heard and confirmed that JJ said, I'm surprised they are even paying me money because I'm actually just enjoying myself. And in truth, that is the way God created everyone of us. There is something inside of you that you enjoy doing, that you can be doing effortlessly, that the world can pay you for. It's Felag Rousseau that said something. He said, when you add value and go yourself along something that is already natural to you, but when you add value and grow within something that you are good at, that is not necessarily natural to you, you become good at it. You like it, but it's not natural when you put a lot of effort, you become good at it. But if it's something that is natural to you and you not add effort and build capacities around it, you become great at it. The truth is the world doesn't have a place for good people. The world has too many good people. The world only celebrates great people. One funny thing about industry leadership is the fact that the industry leader can be paid 80% of the entire worth of the industry, while every other person has to just over the balance 20%. So you just want to be among the industry leader. Take that thing that you say you have a passion for, begin to try it and get out for free. In business, there's what is called M MVP, your minimum viable products. When you build it and begin to test it with to see their feedback. That feedback will tell you whether you need to put in a lot of energy or not. Hey, my closing remark is this. I just want to celebrate you. I want to thank you for making yourself available for this event. Please follow through to the end. Lots, lots of greater things are ahead of you. And for you who are thinking about any more money, be conscious about it. Money has nothing to do with crime and criminality. It is possible to be rich and righteous. It is possible to be wealthy and wise. It is possible to be wealthy and not do that illegal. There's so much ways to earn money legally across border. Across border, you don't need to be in dollars to earn dollars. You can earn dollars, you can earn pounds, you can earn euro from anywhere, and that legally. Never connect wealth or money to anything negative. It doesn't have to be. So, thank you so much. I'm sure you had a great day. I've enjoyed myself doing what I do. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.